Oh, hey, what's up? Mr. Fortin here, Infinite Mr. Fortin. And I had this video recommended to me from somebody in block two to go over with you guys, which I'll talk about right over here. So what we did in class today, we did several things actually. We used graphing calculators to figure out where x-intercepts were. We talked about the standard form, graphing form, and factor forms. The big one, the new one here was graphing form. Graphing form is super useful because it helps us get the vertex. You notice on your graphing calculators, these numbers four and three, these numbers two and five came into play with the vertex here. We just need to remember to change the signs in there. Anyways, graphing form, uh, we also call it vertex form. I'll call it vertex form by mistake. You'll definitely see that there, uh, here. And then factor form, of course, we've been dealing with that with the zero product property. Okay, zero product property. If we factor something, we can solve for our x-intercepts. It's kind of nice here. And then we get rational x-intercepts. Anyways, this one here would have irrational x-intercepts here. Uh, yes, it would. <laughs> um, looking at it here. Um, but this one here is written in what form? Okay, what form? So I got my three forms here. One of the things I want to point out with the forms here too is that the number of parentheses matter, right? The number of parentheses matter because standard form, how many parentheses do you see? None. No standard form. The standard form, everything's already multiplied out. This is written as a sum, not a product, okay? Graphing form, how many percent of parentheses do we see? We see one set of parentheses. That's a good indication that it's graphing form, okay? You see one set of parentheses, and that set of parentheses is being squared, right? Being squared here, and there's x in there. That's how we know it's quadratic, right? It's quadratic here is that x eventually gets squared here, okay? So we kind of have this idea of it's like, is this sum, is this product? Well, it's kind of, kind of a combination of both, uh, okay? That's graphing form. Uh, factor form, how many sets of parentheses are you usually going to see? Okay, unless it's a perfect square, you'd see one set of parentheses, but you usually see two sets of parentheses, okay? That's not what we have here. Just two sets of parentheses, nothing being added on the outside. So this is totally written out as a product, okay? This is the new case right now, as you saw when you plugged into Desmos. This gave you a parabola, didn't it? It gave you a parabola here. And I'm actually going to finish by sketching this parabola at the end of the day. Shoot, shoot. Okay, this is this is uh, vertex form or graphing form here, and I can tell things about this. Like for instance, this one here, I know my vertex is from the class for today. My vertex here was at two five. Okay, two five. Remember, I have to change that sign. I have to change the sign. If x is two, two minus two, that's a zero. Okay, zero squared. This whole thing zero. Negative five is my lowest y value. Oops, put a negative there. I don't have to change that sign. Okay, my vertex here, this is the one we're going to focus on in this video here. My vertex here, got to change the sign here. What makes this perfect square equal to zero? Well, that would be negative four. Negative four plus four is zero. Square it times my negative two. Anyways, this whole thing is zero. My highest point is going to be positive three. Look, that's a negative in front. That will be important as we study this more this year. So I get this. So my vertex is here. My vertex is at negative four, three. Negative four, three. So if I go to this. Um, and just start sketching it out. Remember, the vertex is probably the most useful uh, to graph, right? And that's why we call it graphing form, because it tells us where the vertex is. It's a really easy way for us to get started. So I had a negative four right here. I'm just estimating. I'm just doing a quick sketch. Just doing a quick sketch here. Okay, so I know I have this one point. A um, few things I know about this. I know it's going to be opening downward. It'll be opening downward, but I don't know what my roots are, what my x-intercepts are. I might want to use a graphing calculator for that. But here, if I have a vertex, though, and I'll label this, this is my vertex right here, another point that I could use, I could get to graph my parabola would actually be the y-intercept. Uh, You'll see it in a second here. All I need is actually the vertex and the y-intercept, and I can sketch out that parabola, okay, which I'll do here. All right, here's the question that I was being asked. This is why you wanted me to do this video, is because at the end of class today, I expanded this. I changed this from graphing form to standard form. And there's some steps there. This is hard for people to do, okay? So that's why I want to break this down into notes, graphing form to standard form. I want to do this one this time, okay? I want to do this one right here, okay? In your classwork today, what did they do? They emphasized the order of operations. Okay, verify that both equations are quadratic by rewriting them in standard quadratic form. Remember the order of operations. How could you verify in your calculator that you rewrote the functions correctly? Okay, let me graph the calculator there. Okay, so anyways, I want to change this. One of the important things is we're going to learn how to go between the forms. Do you know how to go from standard form to factor form? Yes, you do. I taught you that one because I taught you how to factor here. Um, but do we know how to go from graphing form to standard form, for instance? Well, yes. Yes, we do because it's all about the order of operations. Okay, so let's check it out here. We need to remember our PEMDAS rules as we basically work to rewrite this expression. Do we, are we going to factor this here? 
No, we're not factoring this here. This is already written in terms of multiplication. We want to get rid of multiplication. We want to change this as kind of this like product sum like thing just to a sum. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, we got to clear those parentheses somehow. What are we going to do to clear those parentheses? Well, we follow our PEMDAS rules to figure out how we're going to clear our parentheses. Okay, P, what does that stand for? It stands for parentheses. That means simplify anything that's grouped together. Well, x plus 4 is grouped together. Can I simplify that? x plus 4, is that equal 4x? No, it doesn't. x is an x piece. Four ones are just the, the 4 there. Can't combine like terms there, so I don't have to worry about p in my order of operations. Kind of nice. So what's e stand for? Got to do the exponent. That's my first step to this, is doing the exponent here. So that's what I'm going to do. My exponent goes to this here. This is x plus 4 being squared, OK? What I call this here, is I have something being squared. It's a perfect square. you got to remember that here. So this here, x plus 4 squared, is the same thing as, I'm going to rewrite this part as x plus 4 times by x plus 4. That's a hard thing to remember, but it's one of the critical things to do really well in algebra, algebra 1. Just remember that that's not just x squared plus 4 squared, it's x plus, it's actually a perfect square. Okay, I'll show you. And what this is communicating to us is that I got a square, and its area is the product of x plus 4 times x plus 4, or x plus 4 squared. My height is x plus 4, my width is x plus 4, so I can multiply that out using a generic rectangle. Okay, here, use a generic rectangle here. X times x is x squared. X times 4 is 4x. 4 times x is also 4x. 4 times 4 is 16. There we go. Now we're clearing our parentheses, at least a little bit in the short term. I'm still going to have parentheses at the end here, because what is the negative 2 doing on the outside? Well, after I multiply this, I'm going to multiply my negative 2. Remember, there's something called the commutative property of multiplication, in that if you're multiplying things, order doesn't matter. Okay, I can do that times that, and that's just easier for you before I, I deal with that negative 2. Okay, so I did my exponent. I, I, I rewrote this using multiplication rather than an exponent here. So I've done my exponent. Now I think about multiplying. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to do my exponent to multiply this here. So f of x equals negative 2. I still have that negative 2 hanging out. Okay, but I've rewrote this right here. x plus 4 times x plus 4. I'm changing this product, remember this is kind of a product in here, I'm changing it to a sum, okay, I'm changing it to a sum. So this is going to become x squared plus 8x, right, got to combine my terms, 4x plus 4x is 8x, plus 16, and then I have that plus 3 constant hanging out just on the outside right there, okay. Have I multiplied everything yet in my expression? I'm changing this to standard form, no I haven't, no. I'm really in the, in the throes of the, the multiplication thing here, and I can multiply it out. Because I have this x squared plus 8x plus 16, I got it negative 2 times, okay? So what I got to do that x squared plus 8x plus 16, it's all grouped together. This negative 2 will distribute to each of those terms. I have x squared negative 2 times. I have 8x negative 2 times. I have 16 negative 2 times. So when I multiply here, I'm going to end up with negative 2x squared, right? That's what this times this equals. Negative 2 times 8x is negative. I'm going to change my signs. That's negative. That's a positive. So my products would be negative 16x. And then negative 2, well, 2 times 16 is 32. And I'm going to make it negative, negative 32 here, okay? I'm still going to leave my parentheses there because what do I have hanging out on the outside of this whole distributed thing? I got plus 3, okay? So I'm getting closer. Am I to standard form yet? Not quite. I still have some print. I still have clear Standard form is only three terms. i got to write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Plus c. I need to combine like terms. Somebody said that in one class earlier today. I liked that. Here, I'll do that. So now I can do that here. f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 16x. Nothing to combine with x squared. It's nothing to combine with x's. But my... My ones, I have negative 32 ones and I have positive 3 ones. So I can combine those here and I get negative 29. And there it is. Yes. We started with this in graphing form. So we can pick up the vertex. I've already put that on my graph. And I've rewritten this. It's now in standard form here. Okay. And what's good about standard form? Well, graphing form was good to get me the vertex. 
Standard form was good to get me the y-intercept. Yes, the y-intercept here. So I can take this and whoop, check it out right there. Zero, negative 29. If I plug in a zero here, you guys know this past series. Plug in a zero here, negative two will times zero squared would just be zero. Negative 16 times zero would just be zero. So hey, the value of y when x equals zero is negative 29. Okay, so I can go way down here. I have to go super low. Like if I'm spacing it out, that's plus three. I probably should go even lower than that. Ah, way down here, my y-intercept at negative 29 or so. And here is my beautiful parabola, okay? Remember, highest point is at negative four, three, okay? And that's where my line of symmetry is, okay? Remember, it's gonna look the same on this side as it is on that side, so what am I gonna do? Just make it look symmetrical. Do your best to, to draw it out here, okay? Of course, quadratic functions have no restrictions on their domain. They go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So put a little arrow button down there at the bottom, and we got ourselves the answer, okay? So thank you for watching this video. One thing that I can maybe show you right now, which I'll do, is uh, I can show you how you can check to make sure you got the correct answer. What can you do? You can check on Desmos. You can check on your graphing calculator. And we'll do that as soon as my... Uh, uh, a computer kind of behaves and I can actually go somewhere. So let's go ahead and, and head on over to Desmos. Okay, we'll go to Desmos.com. Here, get out of the way, Screencastify. We'll go to Desmos.com. How long has this video been? Too long? Okay, too long. Let's go to Desmos. There it is. Desmos right here. Start graphing. Let's do a graphing calculator. And let's see. I'm going to try the original. Well, I can't even see the original anymore, but I think it was this. Y equals negative 2 times by X plus 4. Was it plus 4? It must have been because I got negative first here. Plus 4 squared. And then I got positive 3 here. Plus 3. There we go. And let's check it out. Am I have my Y intercept down there at negative 19? Oh. Oh, no. Negative 29. Oh, negative 29. Yeah, negative 29. Yeah, no, there we go. Negative 29. Ah, oh, thank goodness. We got it there. Yes! Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is right. Let's get this, stan let's get this uh, standard form equation and see if our parabolas match up. Okay, so here, this is the, the, the graphing form, the one in red right here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, and let's get the standard form. So I'm going to type that in right now. I'm writing y instead of f of x, because those are the same thing, right? Just a fancy way of saying y is f of x. Here we go. Negative 2x squared minus 16x, and then minus 29. Yes! The blue one went right on top of the red one. So they're the same freaking function. The same parabola, just in a different form. Yes, people, algebra 1. Math rules. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching the video. I will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye. Are you still watching? Turn it off. It's done now.